everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, college coaches and fans of high school and college football. Uh, this is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. We are a, a new startup company based here in Austin, Texas, where we are focused on using our technology platform to allow student athletes at the high school, college, and pro level tell their story. Uh, in my days, playing back in the day, the only way you got your story, story out was through a writer or a journalist or somebody interview you. And now because of technology, players now control their own brand, their own voice, and can share their opinions and their views. And so we are one of the many uh, technology platforms out there that allows student athletes to kind of tell their story about who they are, both on, in their sport and who they are away from their sport. Uh, so very excited about our, our guest that, that we've been uh, waiting to hear from here. Before we get to him, I want to thank our, our sponsors of Connected Athletics. First one uh, is Buffalo Wild Wings. A good friend of mine, Brian Soltis, is a VP there. He is very passionate about helping student athletes maximize their dreams. And so they have been a big sponsor of ours and helping to uh, uh, get student athletes, not just here in Texas, but all over the country, uh, you know, tell their story. So big shout out to Buffalo Wild Wings. Another sponsor, uh, Go Edit Graphics, my friends up in Nebraska, Zach and the team up there, they are a graphics company that, that builds uh, pre-made and customized graphics for high school or college athletic departments that want to add uh, you know, dazzling creative graphics to any outbound messages like player spotlights or schedule changes or just any information uh, from the athletic department out to their fans or out to the athletes. So shout out to my boys at Go Edit Graphics. And then lastly, Stefan Johnson, a good friend of mine. Uh, his son, Boogie, is at uh, DeSoto High School this year. He has a company called Epic 247. It's another great creative sports apparel company. Uh, they do uniforms. They do seven-on-seven -seven jerseys. They do workout outfits uh, with, a really, with a really big flair. So really uh, happy to have them supporting us at uh, Epic 247. Epic stands for Every Play I Compete. Uh, you can go to their Twitter or their website and uh, check out some of the apparel for yourself. So thanks to all my sponsors, but let's get to uh, this young man uh, that I got to know back when he was in eighth grade, when I was evaluating players from all over the country uh, to be invited to the FBU freshman All-American game powered by Adidas. Uh, we it actually did invite him. He was not able to play, uh, but he still is. He was one of the top 60 freshmen in his class uh, two years ago uh, uh, with FBU. So I want to welcome Maurice Williams Jr. Uh, to the podcast. Maurice, how you doing? I'm doing fine, sir. How about you? I'm doing great, man. Looking forward to telling your story because you're already an athlete right now uh, who's, who's getting big time attention, but we'll, we'll eventually get to that. The main thing I want these college coaches to have this interview, Maurice, we just talked about it, is I want, I want you to show who you are both on and off the field. So let's jump right into it. You know, and I know your parents do a great job of telling you this, but the most important thing when it comes to recruiting is academics. Uh, you're, you're sporting a three-point GPA, might be higher now. Tell us about the importance that you put on your academics. Um, I, my, my dad always tells me, he always stays on me about my grades. It's like, he cares more about that than football because you obviously can't go anywhere without your grades. So that's literally like the number one thing before football, before anything, grades, grades, grades. So that's the most important thing. Yeah, I know your dad does a great job, does a great job of teaching you that to be a student athlete, being a student is first. It's not athlete students. So I'm glad that you understand that at a very young age. Uh, tell us, uh, what are some of your favorite classes? Are you a math guy, you're an English guy, history guy? What are some of your favorite courses? Uh, English, I love English and, and science, biology. So yeah, English and biology, I, I'm pretty good. I've been pretty good at, at both of those all my life. I'm always, every year, I'm always in uh, honor classes in English and biology. So those always been my, this two subjects and favorite subjects. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure you know, obviously any athlete always has at least one coach or teacher or tutor or counselor that has kind of kept them on the straight and narrow from an academic standpoint, uh, or maybe it's a favorite teacher. Uh, shout out one of your favorite people who's made an impact on you from an academic standpoint. Um, I'd probably say my dad because <laughs> I yeah. mean, he, he it's always him. He's mostly every time I come home, he's trying to check what I got. He's checking my grades. He's logging in, seeing what I got. So I would say it's, it's pretty much him because that's the most important thing to him and to me also. Awesome. I like that. Uh, tell us, you know, I know you're still very early, uh, but do you have an idea what you might want to major in when you get to college? Well, I want to major in business. I always want to have my own business. You know, I hear, I hear a lot of players say that and, and your father and I both, you know, being in business and 
know, having our degrees, what part of business, let's drill down a little further. Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to be a finance guy? Do you want to be a marketing guy? Kind of give us a little bit more insight into your business goals. Yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur. Yes, okay. sir. You have an idea what kind of business you want to run? You want to stay in sports? You do something in technology? What are you thinking? I think I might want to, I might want to look into technology, but since I play football, I might want to like start my own, like, I want to say like training. I always wanted to be like a personal trainer, so I want to start something like that on my own. And uh, yeah. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Uh, tell me, you know, coaches need to understand their players' learning style. Tell these coaches that haven't gotten to know you yet, are you more of a visual, verbal, or hands-on learning style? I'm like a visual and hands-on. Like I want to see it and then actually be able to do it, and I'll pick it up way faster like that. You know, there are some student athletes, Mo, that kind of they have a different learning style, uh, different from the classroom and their learning compared to football, whether it's on the field or uh, in a position meeting. And we, does your learning style change based on the learning environment or is it the same consistent across the board? It's, it's always been the same in, in football, in the classrooms, especially the classroom, mostly the classroom. I always like to, to actually be able to do it. And when I actually do it, I'll pick it up way faster. Yeah, I understand that. You know, now that we're kind of hopefully coming out of COVID now, we're on the back end, <clears throat> college coach will be able to get into classrooms this fall. Uh, and, you know, for those that obviously haven't seen you yet because of the pandemic, but when they do get on, on campus and they see you in classroom, give them an idea. Where are you sitting? How do you interact with your classmates? And more importantly, how do you interact with your teacher? Um, I probably will sit in probably like the front. I like to sit in the front or the middle of the class. I don't, I don't know why I just feel more comfortable there. I feel like I pay, I can, if I just sit in the back, I feel like it's easier to get distracted. So, and um, in class, I'm pretty much, I'm always answering questions. I'm trying to answer questions, even if I get it wrong or right. So I feel like I'm always interacting with my classmates and my teachers. Okay, good stuff. Let's switch over now and talk a little bit about, um, you know, well, before I do that, let me ask you this. You know, we always talk about players grinding in the off season and running and working out. Tell us about your grind in the classroom. When you when you struggle in a certain class, what do you do to make up for that gap to make sure you still get good grades? Um, I try to come home and just try to take out that one part that I'm struggling with and just try to keep doing it until I figure it out. I, or, I'll ask, or I'll go to school early. Normally, I'll go to school early before school, or sometimes I'll stay after school for tutorials, depending on which day. I'll just try to work on that extra if I don't understand it. So I'll go like almost every day. That's good to hear. The key to that is that you want to get help. And I can tell you that when you get to college, there are going to be a lot of people within that athletic department who want you to be successful academically, but you've got to engage with them. They're not always going to reach you out. So I'm glad you understand that, that process. Let's switch over to learning more about your family. Uh, no, obviously, I know a little bit about you guys. Great family. Love the last name, obviously. We're not related, but love that Williams name. Uh, tell us about your mom and dad and what they do. Uh, your siblings, are you the youngest, the oldest? Give us a little bit more insight to the Williams family. Uh, my parents, they pretty much are always on me about whatever I do or whatever I make. They want me to make the best out of wherever I, whatever I do. So they don't want me to actually like mess around with anything I do in life. If it's school, if it's academics, if it's football, anything, like they always want me to just make the best out of whatever I'm doing. And um, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm, uh, I have nine siblings, I'm kind of in the middle of all of them. So I got the experience on my dad's side of being the oldest and I got the experience on my mom's side of being the youngest. So, uh, and I have three little brothers and they, man, they give me trouble every day they're here running around and they come and mess with me in my room. And uh, I have five older sisters and um, one older brother. And I pretty much see my sisters almost like, see them on the, like the weekends and stuff. And then my brother, he's in college right now in Arkansas. So okay. I see him whenever he come down. Okay. Any other mom and dad, former athletes, siblings, anybody else play a sport uh, at a high level in high school or above? Uh, my dad played uh, basketball and he, uh, he played pro for a while and stuff like that. Uh, my mom, she ran track in high school. Okay. And, uh, my brother, like I said, he's in college right now. He played uh, football in high school. So he's in uh, for football right now. Okay. Tell me about the importance. I know you're not the oldest, but you do have younger siblings behind you. Tell us about the importance of being a great role model uh, for your younger uh, siblings. What does that mean to you? It means a lot because I actually see like my little brothers, they always want to be like me. They always want to, they attract to what I like. So whatever I do, it reflects on them. So I always got to be a great role model to them and lead them in the right way. Yeah, I like that. 
you know, most most uh, you know articles, interviews, they t- they get right into your stats and height and weight. And believe me, college coach, we can find that out at the drop of a dime. Tell these coaches what are your hobbies and interests when you're not working out and you're not playing football and your homework's done. When you have some free time, what is it you like to do? What are some of the things you're interested in? Uh, I play. I pretty much play the game. I like being at home. I like being at home a lot. So I'll just either be on YouTube or something or Netflix or play the game with my friends and stuff like that. I don't really like going out like that. So I like I like staying in my bed and stuff like that. So okay, I like it. Uh, I'm sure you go. You know, we're we're kind of coming out of the pandemic, as I mentioned, and basically going back out to movies. I went to the first. My wife and I went to our first movie this weekend and and watched Black Widow for the first time in the theater. Uh, what's your favorite all time sports movie? Sports movie. Um, ooh, that's a good question. Um, probably would say. Doesn't have to be football. Well, it probably is football. <laughs> oh yeah, one. I well, I say Gridiron Gang because I mean, yeah. I, I, the first time I watched that movie, I was I instantly just fell in love with that movie. So yeah, okay. Cool. And then, uh, when it's your time to pick dinner, what's your favorite food? <laughs> Quesadillas or burritos. Okay, I like yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you're into uh, Marvel or DC Comics, but w- what's your favorite superhero? Who would you be and why? Spider Man. I don't know. I just liked him since I was a kid. I feel like every kid is they. When you're little, you just like Spider Man for some reason. I don't know. So I guess Spider Man is always stuck with me. So I guess that'll be the, the one that I choose. Okay. Well, we know that you already had some offers. We'll talk about that here in a second. But a lot of these college coaches that are still going to get on you will want to understand who else is going to be involved in helping you make your decision on where you'll eventually commit. Who will that, who will that be out of your circle? Um, a, few of my, a few of my trainers, of course, my coaches, of course, my parents. So, um, yeah, I feel like that's it. I think that's it pretty much. Okay. And then, you know, there's not a high school player that I've ever met or when I played and coached. Uh, that doesn't like playing in front of a packed house on a Friday night or a Saturday afternoon. Uh, love having the community come out and support you on the field and cheer for you. But let me ask you this. What are you doing to give back to those people that cheer you on? Are you involved in your church? Are you involved in nonprofits, Boys and Girls Club, a homeless shelter? What are you doing to give back to your community? Um, my, my dad, um, he's trying to get me into uh, like going to some hospitals, some hospitals and helping people out. But um, so far from what I've done, I've, my little league team will go fundraising, we'll do like car washes or we'll get food back to people and stuff like that. Okay, I like that. Okay, give them back there. And then one of my other favorite questions, Mo, is this. I mean, uh, I know every high school athlete wants to play pro ball. Um, my son played, I was there for about a nickel, about a, for about a cup of coffee. But uh, what is what do you want your life to look like when football's over? Whether you're done with the game or the game's done with you, whether it's after a 12, 10 year NFL career or after college, what do you want your life to look like? You mentioned about you know, being a coach one day. Do you want a family? Do you want to be a father? Give these coaches some insight about who you're going to be once the game is over. Yes, sir. I, yeah, I, of course I want to get married. I want to have at least like two kids. Um, I probably want, I always, I don't know why. I just, I told myself that I want to, when I retire, I just want to move somewhere where like Switzerland or somewhere it snows because I like to okay. snow. So yeah. I want to move somewhere like that. I want to be able to actually have enough money to be able to do something like that like that because I know it's not easy to just go well, somewhere across the country and across the world. Okay. Well I find it interesting. Here's I just I just picked up something with you. You you come from a family of nine, but you only want to have two. Is there something there like because I don't I I know how I know how it feels to deal with so many kids running around getting you know, <laughs> there, so I, I don't I don't want to live that no more. <laughs> I hear you on that. I feel you on that. Okay. That is fair. Um, give me, uh, give, do you have a favorite quote? And if you do, what is it? All work beats talent if talent don't work hard. Okay, that's one of my favorite ones too, I like that. Another one of my favorites here, Mo, is this. Uh, what's your why? You know, a lot of kids play football because they like it. Some of them because they love it. Some of it because their dad played. Some of it because their their girlfriend or they like wearing a jersey. What's your why? Why do you commit so hard to being the best athlete you can be playing football? Um, I want to be the first to do something in my family that no one has ever done. I want to just feel like I want to break the generational curse that's been going on in my family for so long. I want to, I just want to make everyone around me happy and proud. So I want to be successful in life. I don't want to just be mediocre. Okay. And is that something that drives you on those days when, you know what, I don't feel like working out today. I don't feel like going with my trainer. I don't feel like practicing. Is that, is that, is that your why that helps you like, okay, let me get past my feelings and, and knock out this workout. Yes, sir. Because sometimes it gets tough, and you be like, "Man, is this really? 
It's really yeah. yeah. So you gotta so you gotta have something to motivate you to push through it. So that's most definitely my why. Well, Maurice, I know that I've seen you. You're obviously a great athlete, but one of my other favorite questions is, what's your favorite all-time sports memory of yourself? Maybe in Pop Warner, maybe Little League Basketball, your first layup, your first dunk, or your first catch. What is your favorite memory of yourself? Um, when I was, I think it was my Little League team for the Southside Ducks, Penn U was a state championship. And, uh, man, it was a tough game. We played them. We played that same team a few weeks before, and I didn't do good at all. I, didn't, I had no touch. I had, like, I did horrible. So mm-hmm. we played them, It was and we didn't actually win it matter. So I had, like, three touchdowns, and it was just a crazy game. And I, and I that was the first time I ever seen my dad cry. So that was most different. <laughs> Been there, done that. I like that. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Um, switching over a little bit to you as a player in, in recruiting, some of the questions that coach would ask you when you get on campus here coming up. Um, how would your teammates – describe you as a teammate uh they're probably goofy he, he plays around but when it's time to get serious he gets serious um I talk a lot I, I ask a lot of questions and yeah that's pretty much it okay well and I know uh and looking at your stats from last year six two about 190 I think it was a little earlier this year uh tell these coaches you still got more, a couple more years of high school what do you think your height and weight will be by the time you graduate from high school um, the goal is to be like about about six three, uh, two fifteen, two twenty somewhere up in there, or maybe wow. two through two twenty somewhere up in there. I want I want to get way bigger than what I am right now. By the time well, I'm seeing. And Maurice, you're listed as an athlete. I mean, you play a lot of positions: receiver, DB, corner, safety. What what position do you like playing in football? What what gets you motivated to play? What position is that? Safety. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And with that size, man, we're talking about Cam Chancellor, like coming down the box and knocking people out while still being able to cover people. You've got great feet and hips, and you can, you're can you not afraid to cover guys with the number one receiver or two or three. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you <laughs> this season because uh, you're going to do some special things here. Uh, humble assessment. Uh, what are you? What would you consider your strengths right now as a player, and what are some of the things you're working on as we get ready to start the high school season? Um, I feel like my strengths are is my speed and my strength. I feel like I need to work more on – um, my hips and my feet. I feel like uh, since I most I just started playing safety, so I feel like stuff like that is stuff that I have usually that I'm not used to doing, like turning and changing direct changing direction. That's most. That's probably my most important thing that I need to get down right now. Okay, that's fair. I like that. Um, one thing about football, as you know, is trust. Uh, you've got to trust your teammates. Your teammates got to trust you. And most importantly, your trust has to, co- they have to trust you that you will do your assignment late in the game at a critical time. Tell us about the importance of trust between you and your teammates and your coaching staff. I feel like that's one of the most important things because I've seen amazing teams, but they had no trust and no chemistry and they didn't work together at all. And they lost to a team that was probably less athletic than them. They were just more yeah. disciplined and they trusted each other more. So that's most definitely one of the most important things in football. Yeah. Well, and I know that, you know, you're at Shadow Creek. Um, obviously, all we want to stay title loaded program is doing a good job being one of the top programs in the state. Uh, what are you looking forward to coming in this season and, and, and being part of the team and, and helping them have another deep run in the playoffs? Uh, I'm looking I'm looking forward to a lot. I feel like I feel like this team can do big things this year. I have high hopes for this team It's looking pretty good over there right now. So hopefully we can make it far and make it far enough to win another ring. I'm trying to bring another ring to this school. I, I, I hope to do that before I leave. Okay, well, I like it. Uh, are you a big film guy? You like to study your opponent, your receivers, and, and your team, your opponents coming up to make sure that you're uh, keeping an advantage over them. Yes, sir. Because I feel like I feel like I've always been a, an observing person. So, like, if I I can think, I can pick up stuff quick on the fly. So, if I can pick up quick on the fly, actually studying film would make it even better. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much I can I can like film a lot. Well, one thing I can tell you, Mo, from a father of an NFL athlete, my son Aaron played safety with the Bills for six years after playing at University of Texas. The one thing when we used to study film, even back when he was in middle school, is that it shows you that every offense has tendencies. And as good as an athlete as he was, and as good as an athlete as you are, when you really break down film and you can see those tendencies before the ball snap, that's how you go from a really good player to be an All-American, being a high draft pick. So keep that in mind as you go forward that you mentioned your footwork and, and uh, flipping your hips and things. When you watch a film, you'll know how to do that with purpose 
to, to turn, you know, re regular plays into big time plays, you know, PBUs become picks, picks become pick six. And that's when your stock just goes on the rise. I know you understand that. But that's just something from somebody who's been there uh, with my son's uh, experience. Uh, I love hearing you say that. Tell me about the, uh, you know, is there a player you like to pad your game off of? And if who, whether at the college level or the pro level, who's that one safe that you look at and go, I want to be like that guy. Um. My favorite safety, my favorite player has been Troy Palomalu since even before I started wow. playing football. So it's it's crazy that I actually started playing football. So that that's who I look up to as a person, as a as a person and a player, because he's he's just he's just all around great. I love the fact that you are a new generation player respecting one of the best safety safeties ever played the game, man. You're the first player to mention somebody way outside of their generation. I respect that because Troy was one of the best uh safeties to ever play the game. I love that. Um you know, we throw around the word, the term mental toughness a lot, Mo, uh, when we talk football. How do you define what mental toughness is as a football player? Um, I feel like mental toughness is probably like when things getting hard, you don't just break down and give up and like, oh, man, we lost. Oh, man, like halftime, you down by 14 or something. Oh, oh man, we done. Like, you, you got to – you can't you can't just think like that. You got to actually like, man, come on, the game not over. Like, right. there's been people that came back from probably worse than – three touchdowns before because the Patriots did it in the Super Bowl against the Falcons. Yep. So you can, you it's mental toughness is very important. You have to, you always have to have mental toughness. Absolutely. Love that. Hey, tell me, obviously you got good size. You're a good athlete. What, what other sports are you play besides football? Track. What events? Um, the 100 and the 200. Okay. Yes, uh, as you probably already know, and I mean, your dad told you this, but college coaches, we love, football players that run track in the spring. I mean, I know you want to work out with your trainer and I know you want to do all these other things, but football and track run hand in hand because it absolutely makes a difference uh, on the field and help you become a better player. Tell these coaches one thing that you learn from track that makes you a better football player. Uh, the speed is, is different. So track, track fast and football fast is way different. So, I mean, if you like, if you football fast and track, if you track fast and you you will look like the flash on the football field. So yeah. And then my I have a trainer that that he's like one of the top track coaches in the in the world. So mm -hmm. he he tells me stuff like that a lot. He was like track is very important for football. He's like that like you if you play football, he thinks it's like mandatory for you to run track. Like it helps okay. out a lot of time. Yep. No, I love that. I love hearing that you got a track coach that understands that. Let, let's finish with your recruiting. Uh, obviously, there's been some updates here. You've got up, you're up to six offers now. Tell us, we'll get to the names. I'm sure you'll bring them up, but talk to us. You know, you're still very early in recruiting. What's been your experience? What do you like so far? What is it you don't like so far? Um, I like how the coaches, is, they, they, they show a lot of love. So um, I don't, I don't know what I, I don't know what I would say that I pretty much don't like about colleges about, or the recruiting process. It's been pretty smooth sailing from, from now on, and uh, so I, I don't think I didn't have anything bad to say. It's it's it's, it's kind of it's it's tough, but I don't think it's been like too hard or yeah. too much too stressful. Well, I'll I'll be honest to tell you that I think you're you're still early in it, and I think because of the way your father is handling your recruiting. But eventually the phone calls and the emails and the DMs and, you know, it, it, it's going to wear on you. But I know your dad's going to be giving you balance and, and not overreacting and taking this thing slow. It's not a speed game, Mo. It, it's it's making the right decision in the right time for you and make sure that where you go isn't just a four-year decision. It's a 40-year decision. I tell kids all the time, you probably heard me say this at the camps, where you go to college, you're probably going to meet your wife there. You're probably going to meet your business partner there. College is one of the most, high school is fun, but college is where you really kind of form yourself as a young man who's eventually going to become a great husband, a great father one day. So take that decision very, very serious. Do not get all caught up in how many games they won or what ball games they went to, or there are 18 different combinations of uniforms. Think about it that when I'm done with football, it's going to help me be successful in the next thing after football is over. So please keep that in mind. I know your dads have been telling you that from, uh, from, from jump. Hey, as we finish up here, tell us uh, who you've been talking to. Uh, tell us who you, who's offered. I know you had a recent offer. Give us a little bit of update on your recruiting as we stand today. Um. I got offers from Baylor, U of H, UTSA, Ole Miss, Arkansas, and I just picked up USC last week. And I've been talking to um, I went to the UT camp and uh, I, I talked to the coach after that. He told me he's gonna keep up with me this next season. He's gonna come to a few of the games and try to see see how that's gonna be. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and TCU, TCU too. 
Okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that that Texas is on you. Actually, the the safeties coach there is is like another son to me. He played with my son at, at Texas, uh, Coach Gideon. Uh, he's a uh, Likes what he sees, and y'all just—I'll just tell you that I will keep that on the private, on the low. But uh, yeah, I think you're gonna gather a lot of attention. Tell these coaches for those that haven't got to you yet, because some coaches still kind of close out their 22 and 23 class. But uh, are you willing to leave the state? Or how far do you want to go out of state? Do you want to stay in state? Uh, you know, what are some of your what are some of the top things you're looking for in a program that'll help you to make the right decision to commit to them? Um, I pretty much want to go to somewhere where I feel like that fits the way I play. Of course, I don't want to mm-hmm. just go somewhere where I the way they don't really coach the way I play, my play style doesn't fit me. So, um, and I don't, I don't really have a preference on where I, I can go out of state, in state. I really don't, it really doesn't matter. It's, uh, I'm not, I don't like base where I want to go off of where it's located. I mostly want to base it off what's going to be the best fit for me. Okay. Uh, do you plan on taking your, I know it's a couple years down the road, but do you plan on taking your official visits before you make your decision or no? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Good. Good decision because I know it's it's good to say that we're open, but I'm just telling you, it's cold in Michigan. <laughs> Nothing against Michigan. I want to go there being a California kid, but when I got there, I was like, man, it's it's cold. But just keep those <laughs> things in mind. Mel, as we finish up here, and you're doing a great job here, and I'm very proud of you. But let's finish up here. Let's 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 talk about in business. There's a term called the elevator pitch. Well, you've got 30 seconds in front of somebody who may invest in your company. Tell these coaches right now why they should continue to recruit you and specifically what you're gonna bring to their program. I feel like I should continue to get recruited because I feel like in the future, I feel like I'm a, I'm a hard worker. I won't, I won't let the coaches down. I won't give up on my teammates. I won't give up on my coaches, on my team or anything. I feel like I don't, I don't, I won't let anything easily distract me or anything like that. Um, I feel like I can bring a lot to whichever college team I decide to go to. Maurice, talk a little about as, as we continue the elevator pitch. You talked about it, did a great job talking about it from a football perspective. What about the university? Tell, tell these college coaches who have to then report to an AD or the president of the school how you're going to be a great re- representative of, the, of this, the university itself. How important is that to you? Um, I feel like I want to, I like, I, I just thought about this. I actually want to like do things around the campus. I don't really know how college works yet because, of course, um, but. I feel like because I know there's like things around the campus that you can help around and, and chaperone and do stuff like that and fundraisers and stuff like that. So I want to I want to do stuff like that to actually help out the whole college as a whole and, and not just the football team. Great. Last piece of advice here, Mo, uh, for that kid who maybe is an eighth grader behind you who wants to maybe play in the FBU freshman American game or wants to be recruited like you are. What's one piece of advice you'd give that young eighth grader right now who wants to be where you are in a few years? What would you tell them to do? Just keep working, keep your head up. Don't don't give up off of just because you're feeling like you, this is not for you or something. Just because a hard workout or something, don't don't give up. Keep your head up. Keep working. Keep pushing. Stay motivated, and of course, keep your grades up. Yeah. Love that. Maurice, man, I'm so proud of you, man. I look forward to seeing you play this year. I'll definitely be uh, over in the Houston area, probably be at one of your early games. Uh, tell your dad I said what's up in the family. And you know if you need anything, to just reach out to me, man. I'm uh, I'm always willing to help you out, man. But you're doing a great job. And I, I know the, the sky is the limit for you going forward. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. You too. All right. Thank you.